So Darren, I had a question just the other day from a young farmer and he said, you know, it's kind of tough. It takes a lot of dollars of investment to get started in farming. What do you have for me for suggestions as a young farmer coming back in, whether it's going to be with my dad or on my own? Well, okay, first of all, if you have a dad or an uncle or a relative that's willing to take you in and help you get started, that's a huge advantage. There's no question about it for Brian and me to be where we're at today and, and to be able to farm the way we're farming right now. There's no way that we could have done that as soon as we did it uh, without our dad having been farming and, you know, really without his dad being a farmer before him. So there were just a lot of advantages that we had growing up on a farm and having our dad farm and having our dad willing to take us in on the farm Well, operation. yeah, but let's take that a step further. Okay, so for our dad, he actually moved up from Iowa and he worked for his dad for 10 years before he came up here and started farming on his own. And he said he got $50,000. That was basically his deal from his dad. He got paid $50,000 for those 10 years of work, uh, working for his dad so he came up here with 50 grand well let's do the same thing with and, our kids brand yeah you worked well, for me yeah, for 10 but, years i'll give you 50 grand yeah but i mean you multiply that out what would that be worth in today's dollars Two hundred fifty thousand, something like that maybe so anyway it was quite a few dollars back in those days but i mean he had obviously worked hard and done a lot of things on his farm and worked 10 years to get that amount of money but anyway when dad came up here he did get the opportunity to buy basically his wife's parents farm but he had to buy it for appraised value so they never gave him anything so really he did kind of start out on his own from scratch but back then you could operate with little equipment and you know people didn't have fancy stuff i mean you don't have to have that now Brian. well that's true you honestly don't and when you think about it if you look at a brand new monstrous combine yeah it's a big investment but that guy's also probably trading off his last machine that he had. And he's trading that to somebody that's maybe a little smaller farmer. And that guy is trading off his last machine. And when you think about it, if you're willing to buy something a little bit smaller and a little bit older and just do a little more maintenance on it, you can get into quite a bit of equipment for a low dollar amount. And, and that's fine. And that's a, a fine place to start. And so you start off with something a little bit smaller that you may have to do a little more maintenance on. But guess what? You're probably not farming that many acres when you're just getting started either. Yes, but what most farm young farmers are doing is they're also doing custom work. Our dad did the same thing and you see most young farmers doing this and this is what I would tell you. You're basically trading hours uh, to get those dollars. You're not going to make as many dollars an hour as some very experienced farmer that has a lot of land and everything else but that's just the way it goes. So you got to start at ground level and do custom work for people and there are all kinds of different custom work things that you can do nowadays. Okay well I'll jump right back into that in just a second but I was going to say the other thing here too is let's just say that you've got a planter and you've got a friend that's got a combine. There's a lot of equipment sharing that goes on too yep. of you know hey I can't afford to buy everything uh, and I know my dad did that as well where uh, he didn't have a windrower, for example, and his neighbor did, and he said, all right, I've got a baler and you've got a windrower, let's just work together and, and we can get the job done. And now neither one of us had to make a huge capital investment that really, frankly, you know, a lot of that machinery just sits in the shed for nine or 10 months out of the year. You only need it for a few months. And why own all that stuff? You can have somebody else own some of that equipment and that helps as well. Here's the way I look at this thing too. The average age of the farmer now is 57 years old. There are a lot of guys still farming at age 70 75 and they don't want to do necessarily all the jobs they used to do. They don't want to do their own soil testing anymore. Uh, plant tissue analysis is another thing. One of the big things we've been doing on our own farm is doing our own drain tile, putting our own tiling in. That's been tremendous and you can make really good money in a very short amount of time putting tile in the ground. There are just so many jobs and a lot of times we call them hundred dollar an hour jobs because that's how our dad really introduced us into that concept. And you look at your farm and just think about okay what does my dad not want to do? What does my dad not know how to do? You know, all those things, yep. and they may not be the most fun jobs right away. Maybe you say, well, my dad's not a great mechanic, so I guess I'll, I'll be a mechanic. Well, that's fine. You know what? You need to learn that skill anyway if you're going to be a farmer to at least have some basic skills there. And what we find on a lot of farms, and you kind of touched on it, is a lot of guys don't understand their soils well enough. They're great at managing the above ground portion of the crop, but below ground, they really don't know all those things. They don't know all the chemistry and so forth that goes on. Study that. If you're going to college or you're going to a tech school, study more about soils and find out what's going on so you can help out on your operation, bring some knowledge in. So anyway, farming can be very rewarding. It's just it requires a lot of work, a lot of effort year round, and the more you're willing to put in, generally speaking, the more you can get out long term. Well, when you talk about work, Brian, you are talking about our Weed of the Week. Have you identified this week's weed? 